Please, let's <laughs> when we, the first, the very first CFC panel that we ever did um, was part of a conference where we were honoring Barbara Smith, who's one of the members of the Combahee River Collective. So um, somebody in the audience said, what does feminism mean? And we were like up here talking about, you know, and then my grandmama was a feminist and my mama and mm-hmm. identity, which, which we're down for, clearly, still. And Barbara Smith was sitting in the audience and finally she just looked up and she said, feminism is an oppression, is a movement to end actual oppression. <laughs> like, no one had said feminism is a movement and no one had said oppression. People had talked about identity. And feelings. Right. Yeah. And you feelings. know, and it's about my choices and my yeah. body and self empowerment and all this stuff. <laughs> and she was like, it's a movement. <laughs> to end actual oppression. I will never forget that mm-hmm. because it mm-hmm. hipped me to something that's happening in feminism. It's also happening in intersectionality scholarship, like we talked about this a bit. <clears throat> where everybody's talking about this stuff as though we're talking about identity politics and as though we're not trying to do any kind of movement building. So, you know, the move in the academy now for my grassroots in the room is, you know, we post intersectionality now. We talk about this a lot in my graduate seminar. You know, folks want to move post intersectionality. I'm not with it. Let me tell you why. Because, in short, if you read all of the critiques, the folks who are moving post-intersectionality are making one primary intellectual error. And that intellectual error is they keep saying, we need to move past intersectionality because it's a bad account of identity, which it is. It's not a good account of identity, but it was never meant to be an account of identity. It was meant to be an account of how structures of power interact. So it's the difference between talking about racism, sexism, classism, and race, gender, and class. See, those are not the same words. See how they're not the same words? (laughs) Right. So people who are like post-intersectionality are talking about, because I want a better way to talk about my identity. That's great. You do that, right? Um, But that doesn't mean intersectionality is not profound in terms of its ways of talking about racism, sexism, and classism having multiplicative effects in terms of marginalizing people, people. So it is an account of power. Right? The same thing's happening in feminism, right? We're doing the same thing. You know, so people are like, well, why, well what do you mean when you say a feminist? I mean that I want women to be able to move. I want women, all people, right? Women being at the, women, cis, trans, right? Poor, rich. Every, I want women to have the full range of human options around how they move, a, a, a life of choices, right? Access to material resources, safety, right? The ability to determine if they want families and what kind of families they want. See what I'm saying? That's movement stuff. That's not, I want to feel fluffy on Saturdays <laughs> and free about my Friday nights. Like, yes, and, right? It's a much broader vision. And so one of those things is about the, so I think young people resist us about feminism because it sounds like they have to take on an identity, right? Like taking on a religion. And so what we know is that you can't be it perfectly all the time, which is why folks resist, right? Because it's like, well, what? Because look at what we've done to poor Beyonce. She, you know, (laughs) I mean, she is poor Beyonce in the sense that what we know is that there's things that feminism can do for her that capitalism can never do. If we, actually, preach. Mm. if we actually believe that, though, we have essentially said since you want capitalism, you don't get to have feminism. And that's on us. That's not on her, right? Mm-hmm. So, poor Beyonce, look at what we've done to her. We've said this identity is off limits to you, mm-hmm. right? And that's about identity politics and not movement building. And so Isha asked last night when we are talking about this, are we really trying to build a movement? Like, what kind of world are we trying to build? And it's not because I, I mean, look, I like B. I didn't always like her. I like her because I think she's trying, and I'm here for folks who are trying, mm-hmm. right, and who are willing to evolve that's my sort of stake in the game is about women and particularly women of color being able to be, to have access to liberation discourse. Else, what are we doing? So, so, right? so on Wednesday, um, I was in a room with some parents who were trying to organize to keep a school open in one of the communities that I work in. And those, you know, we were trying to get at what, you know, it's not just about keeping the school open. It's about keeping the school open with and it functioning in the way that gives you what you want out of the school, out of the building, that it f- serves the community in a particular way. And what, you know, it, they were not interested in my feminisms or, or, or any of my scholarship. They were interested in being able to craft a language to be able to be heard. And so 
the fact that you have at 5.30 on a Wednesday folks coming in, kids sitting out to the side trying to figure this out, and, and literally if you go outside of this building and look up and over, you will see downtown Atlanta, right? But if you walk down this street, which on one end of James P. James P. Brawley goes through Clark Atlanta University into, into Spelman College, and on the other end, if you walk through it, you would be scared burnt out buildings that kids have to walk past every day. Um, you name it. But they're saying, we, we are staying here. We're, we, have, we have generations who've lived here. I went to this school. My cousins went to this school. We have a particular thing related to this school. And when it was open, it was open for the simple fact of both educating, but it also provided public services. It had on-site child care. It had all these things right there that people needed. And it did not go away because parents decided they didn't care about the school anymore. It went away because of decisions that were being made less than half a mile away from them. So if, in fact, we're not figuring out a way to, to create the space for folks to figure out, this is not just what's going on here with me. This is what's happening nationally. This is what's happening across town. This has something to do with who I am, what I look like, right, what my histories are. If, the, if, if we are not able to like make those connections or at least help facilitate those conversations, then it, it doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And, and I, you know, for me, always trying to kind of figure out how we can take as much as we can of the things that people are figuring out, sitting in small rooms, trying to come up with names to make the connection so that people can hear it and connect with it, like, that is part of my reason for being as engaged as I am at more of a national level because I'm trying to hear what is working there that we can bring here. Like, how are you talking about it there that we can talk about here? Are there literacy issues? How are you dealing with literacy issues? It is a very practical figure this out so that we don't have people feeling so completely helpless when they're sitting in the midst of so many assets and resources and can't get their hands on it. So, you know, when we start talking about what are we trying to build, we are trying to build like the environment where folks have the basics and can build upon that and can do for themselves and can speak for themselves. And right now, that's not what it is. As much as we have the integration of images and, and tele, on, on mainstream media, as much as we have folks talking a good talk, the policy agenda is moving ahead and more and more things are getting cut. And people are not necessarily understanding why they have to fight for this on Monday and this on Tuesday and this on Wednesday and this on Thursday and this on Friday and come on Saturday morning and then on Sunday try to pray and figure out what you're going to do when you start. Like, they don't understand why they're having to go in all these different directions. And there's a way that we can help people talk about this, that they can see that those things are connected. Like, the, the school is a real estate deal. It's not, it's not just about education, it's about housing. It's not just about housing, it's about the fact that all these companies went away and people don't have jobs. And, I mean, all of that stuff is connected. We have a way to help talk about that, but if we don't figure out a way to articulate it and invite people in um, to be able to have those conversations, mm -hmm. what's the point? Like, I got this education for a reason. And it wasn't because I thought there was going to be like fame and <laughs> and you know, right, there's a whole, like she said, there's a whole lot of debt. But if it's not about figuring out these problems, then I'll do something, that something else has to happen.